Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of the Sweet Dash Tips and Tricks series. Today we'll be discussing the marketing toolkit and more specifically we'll be discussing the method by which you can collect subscribers without actually adding them to your CRM. So here I'm showing you a demo website and when we are receiving visitors to our website we might want to funnel them into inquiries that will create them as leads or prospects but sometimes we want to offer something that will be a little less friction, something that they might want to get or receive. And in this case, we'll use an example of a course, an e-course. So let's just imagine we are a digital studio and we're offering an email course that will help teach people how to make changes on their own website. Of course, we want to build the website for them, but one of the perks of working with us in this example is that we also teach you how to make edits ongoing after we do the job for you. And we demonstrate this on the front end by offering this email course for free. So when a visitor hits our website, they may not be ready to commit as a prospect or make a phone call or send an email, but they might be interested in this lead generation device that we're using, and therefore they might exchange their email address for this email course, and therefore we can market to them and try to make them a client in the future. We just want to get them on a list and we want to send autoresponder drip campaign to them and just keep our name in front of them over and over again when they think about websites in this example. So how do we set that up with Sweet Dash? That's what this video will cover. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are in the dashboard. The first thing that we need to do when we're setting up marketing emails is we need to determine what marketing list those emails will be sent to. So a list is a collection of subscribers to your email marketing. And when you set up an email campaign to send, you're going to be sending to one or more of these lists. But when it comes to autoresponders or drip campaigns, those are started when a user is added to a list and becomes a subscriber on that list. So to accomplish our goal in this example, we will need a list dedicated to this email course. So let's go ahead and create that list now. We're going to add a new list. I'm going to call this email course. And we'll just click web design just to make sure that if we have another course in the future, they can have different names. We'll click create. All right, and there's our new list. Okay, now let's go ahead and click inside the list and just take a look at what we'll see. Okay, so of course we have zero subscribers at the moment. We have options here. We can add subscribers manually, we can import subscribers, we can import subscribers from the CRM, your prospects or clients, we can import from your existing staff, we can export all subscribers, and then here is where we would start setting up the autoresponders associated with this list. And in our example, those would be the email course lessons. So let's just say that the email course will have five separate emails sent out over the course of, say, five weeks, one per week, and we'll use that framework to set this up. So let's go into autoresponders. We're gonna click here. Okay, so now we're seeing the area for autoresponder emails for this list, email course web design. And as we said, we're gonna create five different separate emails to be sent on a schedule of one per week for five weeks. Okay, so let's get started with the first one. We're gonna click add autoresponder. Okay, and this one is going to be the first email that's sent in the series. So for this one, we're going to set it as, say, 10 minutes or one minute, let's just say, after the sign up. So what this means is when someone signs up for our email course, we're telling the platform to send the first email one minute after they sign up. Okay, so let me fill in some of this other information and then we'll continue explaining. Okay, I've given this autoresponder a name, and this is the name that I will reference it by, and then a subject, and then just a from name, and now we're going to click Next, and you'll see that there is a validation and that the minimum allowed interval is five minutes. So let's go ahead and click Next now that we've made that better, and we'll just use this WYSIWYG editor. We'll click that and Next again, and now if we want to apply a template, something that we already have saved, we can do that. We can enable placeholders to be used, and you'll see those here. 
Now it's important for you to realize that there are several types of placeholders in the platform. What you see here, subscriber, 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 these are for if you're only using the list to collect subscribers, in which case they're not users in your platform, they're not clients, they're not prospects, they're only subscribers to a marketing list. And therefore we only know very basic information about them, their first name, their last name, and their email address. Here is a client, client, client. You see these? These are custom fields that are inside your platform, and these are the ones that are enabled when I check this box. So if you are going to use these placeholders, you'll need to make sure that your strategy is that the receivers of this email will be clients and will have this data associated with them. Otherwise, these placeholders will return a blank, okay? But in our case, we're just using this to create subscribers, not users in the platform. So we're only going to be able to use these first four placeholders. Okay, so with that explained, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this enable placeholders for CRM contacts and company. I'm going to explain quickly advanced options. If you remove the padding and suppress the email wrapper, the email wrapper is the branded email template that you set up when you are doing your white labeling. If you leave these unchecked, then the content that you insert here will be inserted into that template. If you want to use a completely different template or maybe some HTML email template that you got online somewhere, then you're probably going to suppress email wrapper and remove the padding, and that will let you insert the HTML or use the WYSIWYG and build an email here that will not have anything added to it, anything around it, only what you designate here will be included. All right, so let's do a quick test to illustrate the differences here. So I'm gonna insert some content here quickly. Okay, so here is some very simple sample content just to get the point across. We go here now to preview. We can see that with the padding removed and the email wrapper removed, this is what you'll see, just a very plain, plain, plain. And this may be what you want if you want to use an HTML template or build from scratch using HTML if that's in your skill set. And as indicated, these are the advanced options. The other option is that you can uncheck these, and now let's preview, and you'll see that your content is inside your custom white label email wrapper. So if you just want to send emails that have content, a few pictures, and they're not overly complex or different than your normal emails that go out from the platform, this is the method that you would want to use. And again, we do provide that advanced method if you want to go a little further. Okay, so let's twirl up the advanced options. And now we have our first autoresponder. Now, of course, you would want to flesh out the content more than this, but this is just a demo on the form to add people to the list. So let's just go ahead and move on so we'll get to that point. And now we can click Save. Okay, and now here we see this is our first autoresponder attached to the list, email course and web design. This first one will send after five minutes and we can create as many of these as we like. So I've gone ahead and created five more autoresponder emails, and you can see that I set these at intervals. This will be the welcome email, which will come five minutes after sign up. And then one week later, we'll send the first of the weekly emails. And then every week after, we'll send another weekly email. And just to be sure it's very clear, each person that signs up for this list will receive these emails at a different time. And that time will be based on the second that they sign up for the list. So if they sign up for the list at 10 a.m. on a Monday, at 10.05 a.m. they'll receive the welcome kickoff email. And one week later on Monday at 10 a.m. they'll receive this one and so on. Okay, so that means then the signing up for the list is the trigger that starts this autoresponder series. So now let's look at how do we get people on that list. And the way that we do that is with a form that you embed on your website and that will add them to this list which will then kick off this series. Let's take a look. All right, here we are in Forms. I got here by clicking the Forms menu item in the sidebar. And now to create a new form, I'll click Create Form. From here, we are going to choose which type of form, and we've been over this in previous videos. In this case, we will choose the General Usage Form, 
This is sort of like our all-purpose workhorse type form that we can adapt to whatever specialty needs we have now and in the future. And you'll see what I mean as we start. So let's just click General Usage Form. Okay, and now that we're here, if I just give the form a title and then come down and build several fields in the form and create it and then embed it on my website, the basic action will be that the form will email you the data that gets submitted into the form. And that's it. It won't do anything like create a user in your account. It won't update an existing user. That's what intake and update forms are for. This type of form by default will simply email you the data that gets submitted to the form. However, we have specialty types that you can choose from here. And at the moment, the only option is add to email marketing list. So this is the one we want to choose and we'll click load specialty type. And now we're warned that this will completely override all fields, which is what we want. That's no problem. Okay, and if we scroll down now, we can see that first name, last name, and email address has now been auto-added into the form. In addition, you're not able to add any new fields because these three fields are the only ones that are supported by the email marketing with relation to just subscribers. Meaning, as discussed before, they are not contacts in your CRM. These will just be a list of subscribers when added in this way. Okay, so with that concept understood, let's scroll up and give this form a title. And I think the best title will probably be Email Course Web Design Sign Up Form, we'll call it. Okay, and then we'll scroll back down to the bottom. And the only thing we need to select here is the marketing list. So now we've already created the marketing list. So we can find it in the list of marketing lists. And now we just need to specify if we want this email list to have a double opt-in protection. Or in this case, I'm just going to leave it as a single opt-in. So let's go ahead and continue and we'll just click save. Okay, so now I have our sign up form. The fields are configured. We've configured the email marketing list that the subscribers will be added to when they complete the form. And now we just need to embed it on the website. So let's scroll up and go to link slash embed. Okay, and here you can style the form in any way that you see fit. You can set the success message. You can even add custom CSS. But again, that's much deeper than this video. For right now, we just need to grab the embed code by clicking here, and that will be copied to the clipboard. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch over to my website. This is just a standard WordPress website. This embed code will work on any website. You just have to get the code into the HTML. So I have a visual builder here, which are very common, and there's lots of different kinds. I'm going to open this block, and now I'm going to be sure that I get into the text editor, which means I can edit HTML here. And here, I'll just paste right off of my clipboard, and that's it. And then just click Save, and be sure to save your page. Okay, so now I'm looking at the website like a regular visitor. And of course, you can link to the form in any way that you'd like, but we've chosen just to show a little banner on the home page, advertising the course. Now I can click here. It's going to take me to the page where the form is embedded. Now I'm going to complete the form. Okay, and now this visitor to your website who is completing this form because they are interested in this email course that you are using as a lead generator has completed the form and they'll click sign up. All right, submission received. And remember that this is a custom message that you can change to fit your needs. And now your website visitor, James Emerson, has been added as a subscriber to the email course and web design marketing list. All right, here we are back in the marketing list. And if you scroll down, you'll see Mr. James Emerson. He's been subscribed to this list. And therefore, he will now start receiving the emails from the autoresponder series. Let's go ahead and take a look at the autoresponder series. And it's been over five minutes since James was added, and you'll see here that the email has been sent. This first one has been sent one time, and it has been opened one time. And these statistics will continue to grow and track how many emails have been sent from each email in the series. And this number tells us that everything we intended to set up here has been set up successfully, has been tested successfully, and so we are complete. So thanks for joining us for another Tips and Tricks video. We hope that these videos are helpful to you as you set up your client portal and set up all the automations that are possible using SuiteDash. Thanks everyone, have a great day.